please subscribe to our channel, Pacific Front Untold, and be sure to leave a comment after watching a video. Wealth, power, influence. These words encapsulated the Sung family as they engaged in the politics of an ever-changing China during the 20th century. While the Japanese invaded, political rifts threatened the country's stability and the world became enveloped in war, three sisters, Ailing, Qingling, and Meiling, simultaneously represented and reshaped the country. As the daughters of a wealthy family and the wives of prominent political leaders, they were in a different kind of front line during World War II, determining the financial, political, and social situations for hundreds of millions of people. The Sung family story begins with businessman Charlie Sung and Catherine Ni Kui Seng, a descendant of a famous Ming Dynasty scholar. They married in 1887 and soon started a family. Sung A Ling, Sung Xing Ling, Sung T V, Sung Mei Ling, Sung T L, and Sung T A. The couple strongly valued education, especially for their daughters, which was unorthodox for many traditionally patriarchal families at the time. Nevertheless, A Ling and Xing Ling attended Wesleyan College, and Mei Ling finished school at Wellesley College. Even before World War II, the Sung family was politically involved. Charlie met Sun Yat-sen in 1894 and became close friends with him, helping him publish revolutionary material. When Yuan Shikai became president of the New Republic of China, Sung and his family stayed loyal to Sun, who was living in exile in Japan and moved to Tokyo to help the Kuomintang re-strategize. Ailing, had been working as Sun's secretary, a position Qingling would take over. Qingling then married Sun, despite her parents' opposition, and said, I wanted to help save China, and Dr. Sun was one man who could do it, so I wanted to help him. Mei Ling was active as well. Having returned from her studies in America, she engaged in Chinese nationalism, reform efforts, and various organizations throughout the late 1910s and 1920s. Life in China, however, changed when Sun Yat-sen died in 1925, leading to political divides and the rise of Chiang Kai-shek. The youngest Sung daughter met Chiang, and the two of them married in 1927, partly for political reasons. As World War II drew closer, their lives became more and more entangled with Chinese politics, especially since they were directly connected to prominent political leaders through marriage. Sung A Ling married Kung Sung Sai, who was a banker and politician. When the Second Sino Japanese War broke out, she found multiple ways to become involved from sitting on the Committee of the National Friends of the Wounded Soldiers to working with the National Refugee Children's Association. A Ling, along with her sisters, was particularly involved with the Chinese industrial cooperatives organizations that aimed to gain support for and help Chinese industry. Her marriage to Kung, who held the positions of Minister of Finance and Premier of the Republic of China, meant that she was closely tied to China's political and economic situation. Despite A Ling's public appearance as a patriotic leader, she and her children were accused of corruption, black marketeering, and using insider information to make investments. A Ling and Kung continued to engage in illegal activities and were eventually forced to leave China behind and move to America with her family. She obtained a wealth that made her one of the richest women in China as well as one of the most hated. For Mei Ling, the new Madame Chiang Kai-shek, her life was naturally defined by the emerging Second Sino-Japanese War, and she often used her role to garner support against the Japanese. She specifically focused on addressing women and women's organizations. Just before the fall of Beijing, she spoke to Chinese women leaders and emphasized the critical role of women in the fight against Japan. Although she sought to create an outward image of China as a new, modern, and progressive nation, historians argue that the true situation in China did not accurately reflect that aspirational view. 
In a 1937 interview with Reuters, she said, Theoretically, women are fighters as much as men and should fight at the front. However, personally, I doubt that the female body's uniqueness can support an intensive fight. Nevertheless, Mei Ling cultivated an image of being a well-spoken, powerful, and stylish leader. Using her Western background, she rose in popularity through her engagements with the United States and especially appealed to American audiences. She made several visits to the United States, hoping to get support for China against the Japanese, and became famous for a speech addressed to Congress. For every nut on the side of righteousness and justice, staunch allies in Great Britain, Russia, and other brave and indomitable peoples, May I not hope that it is the resolve of Congress to devote itself to the creation of a post-war world, to dedicate itself to the preparation for the brighter future that a stricken world so eagerly awaits? Visiting cities like New York and Los Angeles, Mei Ling represented China to foreign audiences. She also stayed close by Chiang's side during critical political decisions throughout the war, including the Cairo Conference in 1943, with Chiang, President Roosevelt, and Prime Minister Winston Churchill. The Sung sisters' relationships with each other went through many twists and turns. The Sung women, along with their two brothers, created the outward image of a united family. The three sisters occasionally made public appearances together, such as touring hospitals and bomb sites, and worked together to help establish the Indusco, an organization to help China's industry during wartime. They also lived in Chongqing for a time during the war. However, family tensions did rise behind this facade. A Ling's husband, H. H. Kung, often fought with her brother, T. V. Sung, who in turn did not get along with his other brother in law, Chiang Kai shek. Additionally, Mei Ling and A Ling supported the nationalists, while Xing Ling was married to Sun Yat sen and firmly supported his ideas. During the war, Xing Ling opposed and publicly criticized Chiang Kai shek and his nationalist movement. Xing Ling also engaged with the war effort by founding the China Defense League, a relief organization that brought supplies to and raised funds for communist controlled areas. She became even more politically involved after World War II when the Communists took over China in 1949 and took on the position of vice chairman of the Central People's Government Council. The members of the Sung family had authority and influence that not only spread throughout China but reached audiences worldwide. Together, the Sung sisters made up the most powerful family in China, one with a legacy still remembered today by both admirers and critics. With their background, wealth, and relationships, the Sung sisters had a tremendous influence in the shaping of war-torn and post-war China, which would impact generations to come. 